Welcome to the summit, The Art of Living. And I can now introduce you to Larry Dossi. Hi, Larry. Hello, Susan. Good to be with you. Yeah, and I'm very grateful that you're here. And uh, you are an internal medicine physician and an author as well, written many books. And the one we'll talk about today is The One Mind. And it's, uh, it's about the essence of what we are, basically the one mind. And maybe, maybe you can start out uh, defining what you mean with one mind. I'd be happy to. The uh, theme of the book is that uh, although we do experience ourselves as, as individuals, th that's only part of who we are. There is an enormous body of evidence suggesting that where consciousness is concerned, there are no boundaries. Individuality is customary. I mean, we like to think of ourselves as persons, as individuals. But when you put consciousness to the test, you can show that there are no boundaries to our individual consciousness. We can reach out through time and space and acquire information from other people at a distance and impart information to people at a distance uh, in ways that are almost magical. And uh, I think this is so important uh, that I've dedicated several books to exploring the implications of this. And for me, the major implication is that our consciousness it's not in space and time, which means that it is immortal and eternal. It isn't made, our consciousness is not produced by the brain, which uh, a lot of materialists claim. It is fundamental in its own right. It works through our brain, but it isn't made by it. Well, and I have to say, and, uh, uh, early on in our conversation that this is not an original idea. Uh, this is an idea ha that has been put forward by people across the centuries. It e has even emerged in quantum physics uh, in people such as Erwin Schrodinger, who won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1933, and uh, people like Ralph Waldo Emerson, and uh, Carl Jung were at home with this idea. So although I would like to claim a uh, title to this, uh, <laughs> to this whole idea of the one mind, it's not original. It goes back a long way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's, you're coming from more, a more scientific point of view though, as a physician mm -hmm. and and you, at first, you thought it's all about the brain and body and there's no consciousness first, so to speak. But, but uh, your own experiences took you on the journey of, wait, there is something beyond just the body-mind, uh, my personal body-mind. Well, I think uh, that your thoughts and your intentions affect the world out there. They can literally change the way the world operates. This has enormous implications for medicine. Uh, for example, there are any number of studies which show that by taking thought, you can change the physiology and the metabolism of not just people, but plants and microorganisms and even biochemical reactions in test tubes. This is a powerful ability. I can't imagine any physician in, modern, in the modern era even attempting to practice decent medicine with having, without having this uh, uh, ability uh, at hand, it certainly goes beyond medications and uh, lab tests and all of that. And if you look at the literature and healing, you find uh, a rich uh, tapestry of people who use their thoughts to heal people at a distance in ways that are not supposed to be possible. Our materialistic concepts tell us that that's not possible. There's a problem though, when you look at the studies, the experiments, we show that people can reach out with their thoughts, their attitudes, their feelings, and their emotions to affect the physiology of other people. 
and even uh, in many instances, help them get over serious illnesses. I would be the first to admit that this is not taught in medical schools, which are dominated by materialists who want to say that the brain makes consciousness. When the brain dies, that's all of consciousness. There's no such thing as immortality. I think the data points exactly in the opposite direction. So I think this is a great time to be talking about science because if you open the doors wide and you allow all the data to come in, you can paint a majestic picture of human consciousness in which it is non-local and it's immortal in space and time. Yeah. And that's, that's the one mind, uh, or yes. it's also called God, or, or yeah, presence, consciousness, awareness. Sure. And so, so if that's what we actually are, and we are also this body-mind, sure. right, because it is existing. So if that's what we are, and it seems like the one mind is everything, then it's permeating everything. It's... It's um, what everything actually is mm -hmm. beyond time and space, uh, what everything comes out of, what everything grows out of, what everything manifests out of, uh, right? It's, it's like one and the same. Well, I think uh, that's a very good description of it. If you go back in uh, Western philosophy, uh, you see that people have had this intimation for thousands of years. Plato and Aristotle talked about the one mind of which we are all a part. And although they acknowledge the individuality of consciousness, they had the vision that went beyond that, where there are no boundaries, no separations between people. And uh, we are in the process, I think, of uh, rediscovering what has been known uh, by very smart people for a very long time. Yeah. And, and is, is there something when, when you realize you are this one mind, that you realize uh, that it's all interconnected, everything, mm -hmm. can you kind of just say, okay, I don't have to spend so much time and energy on my, my self because it's all interconnected and maybe I'll just spend time on everybody else and because I'm also them, we all you see like um, it's almost like the importance of oneself is not so important because I'm one with everything and I, I don't have to pay all my time and attention on myself or my closest family only or it's almost like I don't even really exist in at least not in that way as a secluded self. Well, certainly we exist as individuals on the physical plane. I don't want to uh, take that away from anybody. I mean, the sense, of sensu the sense of individuality is very important, but that's only part of who we are. You know, there's a concept in modern physics called complementarity, and uh, it's where opposites come together and form a whole, and although you look at that, the elements of complementarity individually, it doesn't make any sense that we could be part of a one mind and individuals at the same time. But that's the magic of complementarity. Uh, and we, we just sim simply have to develop a new way of seeing who we are. I don't wanna take away a sense of individuality from anybody. Our uh, culture works on the necessity of assigning uh, responsibility to following certain laws and this, that, and the other. Our culture is built around a sense of, of a lot of individuals coming together. But that's only part of who we are. Uh, people access this understanding in different ways. Uh, meditation, uh, spiritual work, uh, some people have near-death experiences which show them the reality 
of a larger pattern of human existence. And uh, once people have had this, uh, these kinds of experiences, their whole lives are changed. They're happier, they're more creative. Uh, they no longer fear death. They uh, seem, to, seem to have a sense of immortality. And uh, there's every reason to invite this understanding into our lives because it makes us more creative and happier and more fulfilled as human beings. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. And, it, and it's like that openness is, is an openness. Um, because some, somewhere I think we already, we know we are something bigger than just this uh, small body mind. We all know that, but we may not really notice it much or we overlook it. Well, our whole emphasis in this culture is on the self, on the individual. You know, we're talking about individual achievement, uh, your career, you, 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 you know, will you achieve your goals and all of, all of that. That's a very valuable emphasis, but it's only part of who we are. You know, this can begin to sound like uh, pure mystical uh, intrusions into logic. But I want to say that modern physics has opened up a new window that uh, people ought to pay attention to. And it has, has to do with the prominency of consciousness. It's consciousness as a fundamental factor in how the world works. And, and this is uh, really a different direction from the old materialistic science, which uh, held that, you know, you are what your brain does, nothing more. When your brain ceases to exist, that's all your consciousness vanishes. That's only part of the story. The new story in modern science goes farther than that. And it says that we are non-local creatures. We're immortal in time and space, like it or not. <laughs> that's, uh, that's who we are. And I think it's a pretty good story. Yeah. And is that is that also from your own experience that you you feel that right because it's like for example you mentioned some people have had near death experiences uh, but that can be some people can do remote sensing right uh, and there, there there's so many different ways where oh dreams dreams come true uh, and it, so there different ways where we can kind of see, wait, there, I'm interconnected with something and I don't understand it, but it's, it's well, there. It's not very rational. So when people say they don't understand it, I, I say, you know, there are a lot of things that we don't understand in modern science, but we go with the data. We go with their personal experiences. And uh, I think we're obliged to do that. We can't wrap our, our minds around the operations of consciousness at a distance because logically it doesn't make a lot of sense. But a lot of quantum mechanics, modern physics, does not make sense at all. But we go with it because that's what the data shows. And in human experience, we also have this difficult data to uh, apprehend. We can know things at a distance. We can convey information at a distance. Uh, people can have near-death experiences where the whole structure of the world seems to change and open up into something really glorious and e immortal and eternal. Now, if you want to dispense with that, uh, be my guest, but a lot of the very wise people in the history of humanity have stumbled onto this way of looking at things. And the one mind may sound like just modern mysticism, but a lot of very brilliant people have, uh, from the context of science, have endorsed this idea. So I would say to the doubters, <laughs> be careful be before you toss this stuff out because a lot of Nobel Prize winners uh, and very smart scientists have endorsed it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and that's probably because we are we are made of it, right? So it's like I don't know. You can't really disprove something you are, right? <laughs> it, it's going to be hard for science to uh, or for any anyone to dis to to um, yeah yeah like we are we are this whatever that is and and it just shows up as a human body mind and and things in life and nature and animals and the world basically life and so so you could say okay this is in a way the art of of the one mind all this manifestation and then then we are that and then we make meaning and purpose out of that but it's kind of like um, what we are, we cannot deny. And, and I, I believe, and from my own experience, that what we are is this one mind that, that is, you can't describe, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's very difficult to describe because, uh, you know, most of us are educated and we have been taught that uh, we're isolated individuals. Our whole culture uh, delivers that message to us, but uh, there's another outlook. And I endorse this because uh, science has recently weighed in on the subject. And the slightest familiarity with, for instance, parapsychology shows that we can apprehend information at a distance, uh, which seems clearly to indicate that our minds are not confined to our brains and our bodies or even to the present moment and we can convey information uh so i would just say that if people think that this is uh, uh too far out they just haven't gone far enough in science and on my side on my side i have a lot of nobel prize winners who have uh, endorse this idea. One I emphasize in my uh, books is Erwin uh, Schrodinger, who, who said, uh, in truth, there is only one mind. And he was talking about the ability of consciousness to fuse, uh, to violate borders, and to go beyond separateness, to function as just a common consciousness. Uh, Far from this being mystical stuff, uh, I, I would represent it as hard science. And people who deny that this is true just haven't done their science. So I would say, uh, spread your wings, spread your logic, take a chance, read a little Schrodinger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or your book, right? They can read this one too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, because it, in your book, you also really go into depth with, with many different sources. And, and I, I like um, the research, the, all the research you do is very uh, uh, thorough and and it's almost like you, you really, just by reading your book, you get convinced, yeah, of course, it's just one mind, right? You know, and, I don't ask people just to take my opinion. I get yeah. criticized by people who aren't used to footnotes and references and all of that. There are dozens of pages of references to the scientific literature. And everything that I, I suggest is true, uh, which is a way of saying that don't take my word for it. Here's some people who have become quite famous in science who have the same idea. So if you don't believe me, maybe maybe you'll believe uh, a few Nobel Prize winners who also have had the same ideas. Yeah. And as you said, also personally, we can, we can know it for ourselves, right? So you can just uh, like we can sit still with ourselves and and maybe uh, we'll notice something that we otherwise wouldn't notice or we'll yeah i, I completely agree uh, one way of uh 
cleaning out the attic of your old ideas is to sit down, be quiet, and just meditate and see what crops up. Meditation is one of the great entry points to the one mind. Another is medicine, which uh, I have uh, pursued most of my adult life. There are so many instances of healing which are not rational that uh, ask us to invoke a new worldview in which consciousness has power to understand things that are happening at a distance and consciousness has a way of inserting itself in a causal way at a distance defying this sense of separateness and individuality. I don't want to uh, destroy anybody's sense of self. Uh, that would be reckless. Hang on to your sense of individuality, individuality but open up to something bigger. Uh, you'll be happier and you'll be proud you did. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also because it is something like the personal and then there's the impersonal one mind right so so it's it's all it's one and the same so i guess when when you also discover what's in you what you're made of what what you really are then you at the same time discover that whole interconnection that you are with everything no i completely agree a lot of people think that uh you know all of this understanding this stuff we're talking about has to come from their own heart, their own minds. That's not true. All we have to do is to open our minds so that our mind, our brain can operate in a way that transmit, transmits knowledge and wisdom that is already existing. We have to open ourselves up to this. We don't have to create it ourselves. There are thousands of uh, books uh, now that uh, teach people how to open up to this uh, awareness. So it's not that this information is hiding from anyone. It's never been more available than it is today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. With the internet, and you, you can access any information nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And so with, with the one mind, when you get to know that for yourself, what, how does it affect life? Like your way of living, um, your way with other people? Well, one way it, it uh, affects people uh, is to increase their sense of connectedness with everything. I mean, connectedness in a relationship no longer becomes just a an intellectual idea. Uh, we see that we're connected with not just other people, but with the entire environment. And I'm talking about non-humans. I, I think that this has never been more important because most people understand now that we're losing the environment. And if we don't turn around our behaviors, uh, it's questionable whether or not the human race is going to be able to survive on this particular planet or not. So how can people do that? Well, we become aware of the importance of all the creatures, not just human beings, but every living thing. If we can sense this connectivity and this interconnectedness between ourselves and the other. In this new way of looking at things, there is no other. This is a fiction. We're all in this together. This creates a whole new ethic about how to behave toward the creatures, the environment, and the planet as a whole. We have never needed this understanding more than today. Yeah, so it's like the spiritual and the science, uh, they're meeting and uh, openly uh, showing that <laughs> it's they're meeting together, uh, yeah. You know, people don't have to stretch their minds uh, to see this interpenetration inter of spirituality and science. Uh, the great example in the 20th century was Albert Einstein. There were many other uh, scientists who saw as deeply or deeper than Einstein did, among uh, whom is uh, Max Planck and Erwin Schrodinger 
and many others whom I have talked about in my writings, as have a lot of other modern authors. You really have to, you really have to work hard to ignore the interpenetration of spirituality and science in the 21st century. Yeah, and but if we're to survive, I think something on the order of interpen the interpenetration of spirituality and science is absolutely necessary if we're going to make it on this particular planet in view of all the challenges that we face. Yeah, I'm even thinking, um, you know, like like prayer or like does does that work? What's your experience? Or well, I you can call it. Uh, whatever term suits your your worldview you, you can call it meditation you can call it the unconscious the pre-conscious the subconscious uh uh non-rational knowing or uh, you can call it prayer you can call it interaction with the deity it doesn't matter the label that we put on it what matters is how we behave in the world as a result of this new view that uh, all of us live in an interpenetrating universe, that there are no rigid, bounded selves that can go off on their own and live without impacting the whole. And this is the message that is absolutely crucial if we're to survive the problems we, uh, we face, not just with the environment, but with relationships between people, between nations and uh, overcoming the eternal temptation to involve ourselves in wars. Yeah, so it's about the behavior, it's the, who we are in the world. That's what really matters. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much, Larry. That's uh, wonderful. I, I really appreciate it. And how can people get in touch with you? Your website, you have anything you offer? Well, the website, I would invite everybody to uh, visit it. It's www.larrydossey.com. And, and Dossey is spelled D-O-S-S-E-Y. LarryDossey.com. Excellent. Well, well I've written a few books too. People can look at them <laughs> yeah. as well. Th thank you for showing my book, One Mind. Yeah. There are 14 others that people can uh, visit as well. Yes. Yeah, because all your books are beautiful and, and uh, yeah, keep writing books too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. Thank you. You work.